The next major colony that we're going to study during this unit is called Jamestown. And Jamestown is vital for understanding English colonization because it is the first successful English colony in the New World. Now, Jamestown was started by the London Company. Another name for it was the Virginia Company. And the London Company was a joint stock company. And you learned about those in the last video. So it was a joint stock company. It was given its charter or permission to start the colony by King James I. The company sent 144 men to create the colony. The company sent three ships to create the colony, and it was created along the James River in Virginia in 1607, and it was called Jamestown. All of the James, it's all after King James I. Now, the problems began immediately. Jamestown was settled in a part of um, Virginia, coastal Virginia, that just like Roanoke had, it was right on the ocean. It was, um, even though it was up the river, it had p bad water. Uh, they ran into problems with Native Americans. The men were more interested in looking for gold and silver than actually working. And because of that, food supplies ran low. Houses weren't built in time. Their defenses weren't built. And it was just a disaster. So for um, the first year, James, most of the inhabitants of Jamestown, up to half of them, um, died. And that's because, again, they were more interested in looking for gold. And the people that came, these men, were more like middle class people. They weren't used to working. They thought they were just going to get rich quick and survive. And it didn't happen. It wasn't until a year later in 1608 that Captain John Smith... Uh, arrived, and this is the John Smith from the Pocahontas story. Uh, he came and he forced men to work. He said, "If you don't work, you don't eat," and that's a great um, way of motivating people because you need to eat. So, and the town needed the work. So, 1608, John Smith arrived. He forced the men to eat. And then Jamestown eventually, even still, years and years of, they call it the starving time, where um, the people in Jamestown were dying from starvation. They were reduced to eating their belts and their boots and rats and even dead bodies of people. Um, it, it just took a long time for Jamestown to actually start succeeding um, and to start, to start thriving. In 1612, here's what really made the colony successful. Um, in 1612, John Rolfe developed a new type of tobacco that could survive shipment from Jamestown to England. And tobacco became really popular in Europe. So Jamestown colonists began selling tons and tons, uh, as much tobacco as they could grow. And um, it's the first cash crop that was grown here in the New World, in, in the English colonies and all that money coming in to help the colony succeed. Now still people would come and they would die of starvation, but more and more people came with more and more supplies and they got, um, they would move further inland and Jamestown finally became successful around the mid 16s, so like 1615, 17, 18. Um, tobacco was grown all over the place in Jamestown, uh, in the streets, behind people's houses, out in the fields, and with that growing of this cash crop tobacco, um, there was a need for labor that we're going to talk about in a second. Now here you can see pictures of Pocahontas. She was a, pr a princess of the Potawatomi tribe that was, or the Powhatan tribe, sorry, that um, lived near Jamestown, and um, she married John Rolfe, she married John Smith, she was all over the place. <laughs> she went to England, um, I believe she died in England. Pocahontas is an interesting character in history because she was a, um, a female that really seemed to have a lot of power and presence with the English. Uh, at the bottom you see a cash crop is a crop grown in order to be sold for money. And a cash crop is typically not food. So uh, we've talked about cash crops already. Cash crops are tobacco, indigo, the one food is rice, and cotton. They're all grown, as, uh, grown to be sold for money instead of to live on and survive on. Here's a picture of Jamestown. It's this little triangular area, and notice it's, it has walls around it to protect it. 
and walls around the town here to protect it because this area was not safe. The, um, the local Indian tribes had problems with them. They didn't like them. There were massacres both ways from the English massacring natives, natives massacring English. It's a story that continued for hundreds of years. Another picture of the triangular fort. Okay, so tobacco became so successful that colonists increased farmland in order to grow tobacco. And this growth of tobacco required more workers, more and more workers. And, and it also required more and more land. So there was a lot of pressure growing in Jamestown. Number one, pressure for land. So Native Americans were, be, were met up against um, in this expansion of Jamestown for land, for tobacco, and also um, the need for workers. So the whole indentured servant system began and grew because of the desire, the need for tobacco. People began growing enough tobacco, making enough money that they could afford to buy people's indentures, and um, and that was the norm for many years. Now, it wasn't until 1662 that African slaves became a useful form of, of uh, workers. So we're looking at about 50 years or so of people coming as workers, but as indentured servants versus slaves. And a slave is a person forced to work against their will for no pay and no freedom, where an indentured servant actually has a contract and agreement um, behind, behind their, the reason that they're there. And they can get out of that agreement, they can finish their agreement, and then they would have the rest of their life to live on as free men. Here's a picture, a map that we're going to study about the slave trade. And notice where most of the slaves come from, which is Western and Central Africa along the coast, which makes sense because it's the closest to North and South America. And then the most places that they go to. See, British North America was an extremely small part of the slave trade, it had a very small uh, percentage. The West Indies and Brazil, they were the big places where in Brazil there were huge sugarcane factories and same thing in the West Indies. All those islands, the Native Americans were completely wiped out and then replaced by African slaves uh, to work the sugar plantations. Because really the big, uh, even though tobacco was important for Jamestown, eventually sugar is really what drives the economy in North, in North America. It's all about sugar. Tobacco, cotton, indigo, rice, yeah, that's nice. People made a lot of money off of it, but sugar was the biggest uh, money-raising um, good. Now, Jamestown is important because of government. Um, and Jamestown was, it, it was, it was 3,000 miles away from England. So it was hard to govern from that far away. So when the colony was first created, it was run by officials from the London Company. But by 1619, the company allowed individual colonists to create a representative government and elect representatives. A representative government is a government in which people elect those who make laws and decisions. So not everybody's involved in the government, but people have a say on who's going to run the government. A representative is one of those people that is elected by the citizens to run the government. Um, <clears throat> representatives met together in the House of Burgesses. The House of Burgesses is just the name for the house that they met in, kind of like the House of Representatives today. Theirs was just called the House of Burgesses. Uh, and their job was to make daily decisions for the colony because it was too far away from England and the English government to control them. And this is the first time that there is a representative government in the English colonies. So it's very important to remember the House of Burgesses. You're going to see this again on your unit tests. You're going to see it on your quizzes and on your final even. The House of Burgesses was the first representative government here in the New World um, by European countries. Here's a picture. Now look at these guys. If you look at this, you'll get the impression that the members of the House of Burgesses were 
well-to-do. They were rich. They had money. They were the landowners. They were the people that had goods, that had the, the tobacco to sell, and they had a lot of money. And just like everywhere, if you have money, you have a better chance of being in, being in power. All right, so the Jamestown colony was the first successful English colony in the New World, but this would lead others to create colonies. There, in the Eventually, there would be 13 colonies that were settled by people who brought with them the beliefs, laws, and customs of England. At the time of their settlement, no one could imagine that these first English colonies were laying the foundation for what would become one of the most democratic and powerful nations in the world. And that nation is the United States of America, the country that you live in right now. And our roots are English. Our law, our culture, our language, it's, it's England. And the reason is that our government started from England. It started with these little tiny colonies over 400 years ago. So make sure you get your notes filled in and come to class tomorrow.